quarantined. I uh, got uh, Jim Chester on the line, head coach of Gardner Webb. How are you, man? Doing well, Josh. How are you doing? I'm all right. So my first question is, are you a big fan of the content that I'm putting out, or is it just you're really good at promoting your program? Because we had you on the college tour, and now here we are again. No, I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, I'm obviously a huge fan of, uh, um, you know, obviously what you guys and yourself are doing for, uh, you know, players out there. But also, um, you know, I think any type of opportunity to educate any high school uh, recruit about, you know, programs or what's going on um, in a lot of different facets, I think is, is an awesome thing. So I think what you do is amazing. Appreciate that. And I think uh, I appreciate you taking advantage of it and showing that there's an opportunity here for coaches and programs to let your voice be heard and, and get some attention. So let's jump into the, the stuff that you were talking about, the, the educating recruits. Um, the, the one that's panicked most right now is uncommitted seniors out there. Um, and so in, in thinking also a lot that there's not going to be room for them, right? Because the mm -hmm. NCAA is going to allow seniors that are already in college to stay. So, you know, how do you think that the, the NCAA is ruling for seniors to be able to get another year is going to impact the seniors in high school getting a chance at college? Sure. I think, I think, in, you know, this kind of a twofold answer uh, to what, to, you know, what you're asking, I think number one, um, you know, about being late. I, I've, I've said this for years, um, and, and we talked about this on the college tour. I, uh, you know, I've been really blessed that I was a, you know, junior college head coach, D3 head coach, D2, now Division One. And if I put together an all-star team of all those young men that I coached all over the years, um, and I believe that a majority of them probably committed between the um, – anywhere between, I'd say, probably May – of their senior year to, to like Labor Day. Um, and I've had guys go to other schools for a few days and go, wait, this isn't for me, and get a phone call, and we would get them in right before ad drop. So um, right. I, I never feel like there's an exact right time that recruits are supposed to commit. I mean, I've, it's more about a feel. Um, you know, I, again, I, I could tell you some really good players, guys that got paid to play, that committed in the summer of their senior year. And um, so I, I think it's, you know, as much of more of a time thing, it's gotta be more of a feel thing and, and, and having a really good understanding about like, where do you want to go and, 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 and what the situation, because listen, a school situation can change drastically from if they're recruiting you the July before to the next July. Right. So there's a lot of different things that go on. So I, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's, for some reason in society and what we do, it's like this, you got to recruit, you got to commit at this time. You got to just, no, I think everybody's on their own individual timetable um, right. for what and, they need to do. You know, that we all have talked about that and agree, but obviously this is a really unique situation. Um, you know, so the, the, sure. panic, the panic is coming from, well, guys are going to stay in college next year. Is there going to be space for me? I mean, do you think there's going to be a huge log jam that's going to impact this 2020 class that's uncommitted in terms of maybe being able to find a place to play? I think, I think what's going on in, in a lot of ways, I, I, it's going to create more competition. And um, I, I personally, from my side of the desk, you know, we, 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 we want competition. We, we want, we believe that competition, um, you know, breeds character and we believe it's going to create, um, you know, I, you know, I think it's going to create the best player in our, in our opinion, but I think from a 2020 grad um, and, and listen, we're not officially dealing with this yet, but we're probably division one wise. We're unofficially dealing with it because we're, we've got till, I think it's March 30th or April 1st, some, somewhere in that time, what's going on. There's going to be a, um, you know, we're going to find out exactly what's going on with seniors and eligibility and different things like that. But, you know, I, I've already had conversations with some of our 2020s and explained to them that, I, like, I think this is a true blessing. Um, I think an opportunity, we, we had a strong, and we have a still a strong senior class. Um, and, you know, we had some young men in that group that, that had some outstanding leadership and had some serious qualities that they've developed over their time um, in college and here at Gardner-Webb that if next year's freshman class, in essence, is able to be mentored by two senior classes, um, to me, I mean, there's just not only is there, I believe, more growth on the field, 
um, I believe there's more growth off the field, um, academically, um, maturity, um, strength and conditioning, like just being able to see like, this is what I want to look like. This is the way I want to act. This is the way I want to play. Um, so I see it as a big positive. Um, and I've tried to communicate it to, to, to our commits that like, listen, you need, you're going to be able to, you know, probably speed up your growth process in a lot of different areas, you know, being mentored by some of these, you know, other young men. Right. You still think there's going to be opportunities out there for the guys that aren't committed though. I, I, I do. I, I mean, I think that, I think that the, the, when they haven't committed, um, you know, even this, because this season has been abbreviated, um, you know, I, I really believe as coaches, you're able to figure out where, you know, you need, you need additions um, or still able to figure that out fairly quickly. So I know that needs of a program almost change daily based off of a million things that go on, whether it's grades, whether it's play on the field, whether it's, you know, off the field, whatever it might be. I just think that, you know, some of these young men that aren't committed yet, I think that a lot of schools, you know, their situations have, have changed right. a lot. Where, and I, where I don't do think you it think, hurts for them to check, you know, check different things out. Right. Where do you think, because you have been at all levels and you've kind of seen the timeline of recruits mm -hmm. um, in, in your own recruiting of players, where should 2020s that are uncommitted right now where should they be looking? What level or what region of the country? Is there a specific spot where they might find more opportunities based on your experience? Yeah. Well, selfishly, they should look at Gardner-Webb. <laughs> um, you have a developmental team now also. Right. Talk about that. Yeah, we all, we, we're so excited about adding a developmental program. Um, you know, we're going to be able to play a separate schedule. Um, we're going to give, you know, probably – um, some young men, an opportunity that we maybe couldn't have before based off of roster limitations and different things um, to get an outstanding Christian education, um, get an opportunity to play at the Division I level um, and really get access, you know, to a Division I strength coach, Division I facilities, divi you know, a lot of different ends um, of our program and, and, and be able to truly, um, what the word means, be able to develop. And, and I really believe that development um, – on the field does come from playing games. I think there's a big piece to that. Um, not only the practice and the strength conditioning and everything else that we talked about, you know, we're going to be able to give some opportunities away that, um, like I said, we probably were definitely not able to do before. So, um, you know, we're definitely still looking for 2020s. Um, that so let me play, let, let me play the, uh, obviously the other side of it and say, mm -hmm. okay, well, you know, developmental team, what does that mean? Do I ever, you know, do I get a chance to make the, the, the NCAA, the varsity roster? Like, how, how does that work? Or am I on this JV team forever? No, no, I mean, 100%. I mean, like, I, it's like anything in, in, in life. Like, you produce and, 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 you, and you do the things that you need to do, and, and, and you're able to prove to the coaching staff, like, hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to be one of the best 35 or whatever the number may be in 2021. Um, you know, th that's going to happen. That opportunity is going to be um, there. We're going to we're going to practice um, almost or we are going to practice most of the time with everybody in the fall. Um, we're going to be able to do a lot of different things. I mean, I, I, I have experience dealing with with, um, you know, a little bit bigger rosters and being able to do some things like this. So right. we try to make it fun. I mean, we'll have multiple teams. We'll do different types of league tournament competition type stuff and there's going to be ample opportunity for someone I, I want the young man that's got a chip on his shoulder that says you know what you missed coach like you missed before like I you know if you give me this chance like I, I'm, I'm going to make it I'm going to do it I, we're getting a lot of those messages and we love it we want them right come on in let's do it I, I I'm a big fan of developmental programs as far as I know you're the first division one team to have one is that correct I, I think so too. Um, I, I've done a little bit of research about it. Um, you know, I actually got I got a phone call from a publication in an interview about some of the questions you're asking me, like a national publication about, um, you know, well, hey, what about uh, you know, like the log jam and some different things like that. I was, Look, I, I don't know how big of a log jam we're really going to have right. because we're going to be able to provide a little bit more opportunity than other programs can. So I. I, I see a lot of this as a positive. I, I, I have not been one of those guys that has been out trying to, like, you know, sit here and, and, and shout out the negatives in regards to, to what we're dealing with. I mean, this is a horrible, 
horrible thing that, that the world's going through. There's no doubt about it. Um, and, you know, but from, you know, our, our professional standpoint, the baseball standpoint, there's a way bigger picture um, for what we can do. And, I, and I, I'm just, I feel like we're able to offer a little bit more of an opportunity than somebody else might be able to. Yeah, 100%. I, again, I, I have learned a lot about developmental programs, more so at the D2 level. Um, and, and I think it's great. I think if you're an uncommitted senior right now, then you're not the kind of player that's going to go step in and play your freshman year anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well get a chance to play that, that full schedule, get more reps, and, and get better. So I, I do like that. Now, let's say we got the kid that, I don't want to be on a developmental team. Okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. Going back to the original question, you know, what do you think they should be looking at right now? Like, where would the spots be available for an uncommitted senior right now? I mean, I did the whole Twitter campaign. It looks like a lot of stuff, you know, D3s, NAIAs, Midwest, Northeast, those kinds of things. I mean, what would you suggest looking at? I'm, I think it still just goes back to, to, you know, making sure they go through the right process in regards to what they want. Um, I mean, first and foremost, there's got to be a comfort level on the, uh, you know, the, the actual region, uh, the setting, you know, whether, whether it's uh, rural or urban or whatever, however they want to go through, they've got to create that checklist. I, I think opportunities are everywhere. I think from Maine to California to Florida to North Carolina, there, there, there's, there's a roster spot somewhere for somebody. Um, yeah. You know, this, young men will go anywhere to play baseball, anywhere warm, cold, indifferent, whatever it might be. I mean, there's just opportunities everywhere. And I think that those opportunities that I, – I, th I think that the, the, the player is going to have to help create some of those. I mean, I mean, Twitter's gone crazy here. Right. I wanted to – Seven days. Yeah. It's I, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have now just lived on Twitter the past few days. I've given myself some more work than maybe I needed to. Yeah. But it, it's awesome. And we were talking about that a little bit before – when all this happened, I think many of us in this field kind of thought, okay, well, I guess things are going to go quiet for a little bit. And it's been the exact opposite. Uh, how has the recruiting been going for, for you right now? It's, 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 uh, it's been a little bit of a, of a in regards to like a, a tailspin. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just from, just from the, I, I try so hard and, and um, you know, I, there's no coach in the country that says that they get back to everybody. There's no way. I mean, between the amount of emails and DMs and Instagram and all that type of stuff, you know, I try so hard to get back to everybody. I try. Even if it's not a good fit, I just think it's important that if a young man took the time to respond or, I mean, reach out to us, it's important that we respond to them. I, we try our best. Um, so, but trying to filter through a lot of it because there's a, there's a panic mode going on. There's a panic you're mode. busy, is what you're yeah. saying. That recruiting is extremely active right now. It's 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 as active as I've ever seen it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's this is more active than summer. It, it you know, if I turned my Twitter off and didn't turn on my computer, then I maybe it wouldn't be as active. But right. I then I feel like I'm going to be missing out on somebody that can really help us. Wow. I, I was thinking, I, I was telling my wife the other night, you know. 15 years ago when I first started recruiting, well, and it was actually a little longer now. It would have been, I'm sorry, 18 years ago when I started, like I started recruiting. You know, you, you went and you sent out letters to, like, everybody, like, in the state. I was in Pennsylvania. You sent out a letter to every high school in the state of Pennsylvania and asked, who are your top three players? And you, that's how you started formulating lists or who are the top three players you coached against or played against. And you started forming lists. And then you would, you would take a time frame of about, Four o'clock, that's when kids got home from school, till about 5.30, 6-ish maybe. You never called anybody between like 6 and 7.30 because that was considered dinner time. And then you could call people from about 7.30 to 9. But you had to do it from your office because there wasn't really you, – you didn't have a cell phone then. Right. I, and, and, and I just was thinking about this this weekend about where – what would I be doing 18 years ago if I had to mail letters and do like now way the way things go, you know what I mean? Cause you, you know, I, I, I fall asleep with my phone in my hand. Well, we wouldn't because, be, do, we wouldn't be doing this right now talking about there's no way. to a national audience. So no, there's no way. And it's like, but I feel like if there's, you know, I feel like we as a staff have, have adapted to, you got to adapt to the times or, or, or you get left behind and I don't know, I wouldn't be in baseball. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of kids out there right now that are going to feel, 
uh, more comfort uh, or their comfort level rise because they hear, you know, yes, there's opportunities. Yes, it's oh. active and, and let's, let's get to work. I got a question for you that I just, I came up with. Okay. Uh, every coach uh, always has, you know, we, we're always humble. We don't like to say that we won the game. It's all about the players. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we all know there's a story where we're like, Hell yeah, we made a great coaching move there. What's the one for you, the best coaching move you ever made where, where deep down you're like, yep, that was the difference maker? The best coaching move. Okay. In game. In game. In, ga in game. Yep. In game. Um, I don't re remember the year. I'm going to say it's 2009 or 10 or one of those things. We were in a, I was a Penn State Greater Allegheny. We were in a conference tournament game. Uh, playing against a team that was coached by a former big leaguer. Um, and when you coach again, I, I noticed at that level when we coached against guys that were pros, those guys loved to run the wheel. Okay. okay? So, like the, like the National League, the pitchers bought and they would run the wheel and the shortstop would vacate their position and all that. And it was like the third or fourth time we played them that year. And it was an extra innings, first and second, one out. And the guy, the guy that we were playing against, he, he, he really – I knew he was going to run the wheel. So I called – this was, I think, the first year, maybe, or I can't remember, we could do the offensive timeouts. Um, and we called one, and we ran a slash. And everybody started running. Like, you know, third, third baseman crash, first baseman crash, shortstop vacate. So the whole infield is being covered by one person. And I remember our young man – and we practiced it. So the, the players still get the credit for this. I just remember slashing. And the young man hit like a ground ball in the second base, like the second base hole, I believe. Or I can't remember. And it just, it was on turf and it scooted all the way, like midway through the outfield. And we scored both runs and we won the game. So I, I, we still to this day, I, I slash against the wheel. Um, you don't see as many people run the wheel because it can be defeated that way. But I just know when we play against somebody that maybe have played in the National League, they love to run the wheel. All right, let's – for the last question, let's flip it. What's the most boneheaded call you've ever made? In oh, which one? Where do you want to start? I want um, the one that sticks out the most, <laughs> where your players just felt like, darn, I can't believe I'm playing for this guy. Yeah, I – um, over the years – and I, I've made this – I've made this uh, mistake <laughs> a bunch of times. And I, I, and I, I can't I, – I, I don't – I'm trying I, I this has happened three or four times. I'm a big proponent. Like I play offense over defense. So I put guys in positions they shouldn't be in a lot of times. Um, and there's definitely plenty of times where I've left that person in the game too long to where the baseball found them a little later than they should have. And I didn't make the defensive replacement when I needed to. Yeah. I'm guilty of that. I'm okay, definitely. well, we're not going to give a certain instance because we don't no, but there, there's, point there's plenty out of them. what year and what position that was. No, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Uh, well, thanks for coming on here. Uh, always good to talk to you. Um, and, and I think it's really good for everybody to hear from you guys right now. Um, and sorry your first year was abbreviated, but I think you had a lot of things to look forward to there. No, I appreciate that. No, thank you and um, for, you know, having me on and um thank you for everything that you're doing um you know for all these young men across the country and thank you for what you're doing for college baseball because this is awesome and um you know ag again i can't be more appreciative um for you know what you're doing for us no i appreciate that man just uh everybody's trying to have a have a place in the game and have a role in the game so uh but it wouldn't be possible if guys uh weren't willing to do this and, and do the college tour and anybody who's not watched the college tour of gardner webb go on my youtube page and uh and watch that where we spend some time with coach chester uh at the field and the facility so again coach thank you be safe uh to you and your family and we'll talk soon man back at you go bulldogs <laughs>